Marking 50 years of partnership between UNESCO and Kenya, UNESCO brings an intellectual and humanistic response to global challenges of the 21st century through education, the sciences, culture, communication and information. UNESCO is committed in realizing everyone's right to education and addressing literacy. The Learning to Live Together program takes into consideration the spirituality of the participants that we work with. UNESCO's 1976 General Conference held in Nairobi provided guiding principles and a global approach for promoting adult education. From preschool to higher and adult education, we are working to increase equal access to education that enhances knowledge development and life skills. In Kenya, we are focusing on skills that aim at promoting harmonious coexistence within the schools and the community. We decided to pilot the program in Tana River County. This is an area where there are inter-community conflicts because of uh, different communities living together. Conflicts keep on emerging. We also realized that it's also an area that is prone to disasters in terms of flooding, and that combination really affects learning in that area. And we felt that it is important to equip uh, the teachers and also the learners as a way of trying to promote their learning achievements in that area which are relatively low. Improving knowledge and understanding through science equips us to find solutions to today's challenge of achieving sustainable development. Following the severe drought of the year 2011, where almost uh, more than 10 million faced uh, starvation, they lost their livelihood. So the presidents of the region came together and made a proposal that we should find a lasting solution. So the best option was to go for groundwater. Because of uh, UNESCO's scientific knowledge, uh, they were able to take up the challenge and they designed a project for the whole of Africa, uh, that is the countries of Somalia, Kenya and Ethiopia. In 1965, the UNESCO Nairobi office became the hub for technology and innovation in Africa. For us in Kenya, we were able to identify five groundwater zones of high potential in Turkana. At the moment, we've been able to verify that aquifer through drilling of five boreholes using solar-powered uh, pumps. On the issue of sustainability, we will carry out that assessment to establish the optimum level of abstracting this water. Recently, we gathered international scientists and adopted the Nairobi data sharing principles to accelerate the generation, analysis, and archival of scientific data. Open data solutions will facilitate cooperation needed for greener societies. Communities must participate and be part and parcel of resource management. UNESCO advocates for a society based on values of justice, freedom, and human dignity, creating a dialogue among people to live together for social transformation. One of my favorite stories on Wangari Maathai, during the time when she was fighting for them not to cut down the trees and not to take over the forest. She was so passionate about what she was fighting for. And I remember watching this and thinking, wow, you know, that she's doing something that she's passionate about and I'm passionate about the environment as well. How can I take this experience and what can I do with it? And I decided I was going to start an environmental club in my school. And what we would do is we'd organize weekly events. It was, if it was a cleanup or if we wanted to go speak to a different school, that would create awareness and really make us more agents of change. Culture is a source of identity, innovation, and creativity. 
from our cherished historical monuments and museums to traditional practices and contemporary art forms, culture enriches our everyday lives. UNESCO has uh, been collaborating with Kenya in uh, promotion, training, uh, both protection and conservation of, of heritage. Salamu town is the area where the Swahili culture originated. We have had so many communities coming together. You have the Arabs, the Africans, the Bantus, uh, so many groups that came into Lamu to produce this unique culture. In regard to research on uh, heritage impact assessment in Lamu, we interview the local people on their view about the Lapset corridor and its impact to Lamu as a world heritage site. Since 1968, UNESCO has worked with Kenya to preserve its rich natural and cultural heritage as national treasures. We also have sacred Mitch Kendakaya forests. The local community still maintain and have value for this heritage. So they are very passionate about the conservation of that forest and um, actually you are not even allowed to go if you are not vetted by the Kaya elders. So that heritage is very outstanding in terms of its protection of nature and culture. UNESCO promotes freedom of expression and diversification of media landscape. Kenya is home to the first community radio station in East Africa. We work to create inclusive knowledge societies and empower local communities by increasing the access to information and knowledge. So the training involves uh, mainly three parts. The first one is mobile application development, second one is web applications development, and third one is entrepreneurship, which I'm most excited about. The whole objective of the, of the training is that at the end, a young person understands how to make web apps, understands how to make mobile apps, and can see how to wrap in entrepreneurship, solve local problems using technology, and make money while they're at it. Young people are very keen in taking up new technologies. They're excited and want to understand how these platforms work and how they can contribute to it. So we get young people and introduce them to digital tools that they can use to learn. I see it as a way of solving the huge problem of unemployment, especially among the youth. Development, I think it's the advancement of humanity in different ways towards our ultimate happiness to be philosophical. The sharing of knowledge and information, particularly through information and communication technologies, has the power to transform economies and societies. work on eradicating poverty, building peace and inclusive resilient societies for a just and sustainable future. This is the future we want. Who should I blame for lack of education? Who should I blame for Lack of information, who should I blame for the breakdown of our culture? Why should I? Why should I? Why should I? Why should I when the answers in the mirror? Why should I? Why should I? Why should I?